started then. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Sorry for the delay. We were having some uh, technical difficulties, but I think we're all squared away right now. Um, today, I'm super excited. We are going to cover best practices for virtual career fairs. Um, I'm excited that we have representatives from Handshake as well. So um, we are going to have them talk about some recent updates to the Handshake virtual career fair platform. And uh, whenever they first launched it in the fall, um, it was brand new and uh, we've had some experience with it and we've had a couple niche fairs with it and it's gone really well. So um, we're going to use Handshake for our Encompass career fair here in the next two weeks. So um, thank you for, the, for them uh, joining us and talking about that. And talking about this past fall, one of the things, it was really a learning experience for employers, students, as well as for us in career services. So we wanted to share some feedback we received from students as well as employers that we've worked with. And we're hoping this information will help you maximize your recruiting efforts for this spring. Um, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, Sean, do you, you were talking about the agenda, but uh, there's an idea of what we'll be covering today. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide, Sean. Excellent. So um, one of the things I want to talk to you about, as I said, Encompass, we have uh, that happening in two weeks from now. It's on the 26th and 27th. Day one is full, but we still have openings for day two. So I would encourage those of you who are on the meeting today, if you haven't signed up, um, definitely check that out. Um, we also have our Jumpstart event, which is uh, happens a couple hours before the actual Encompass event. And that's really for freshmen and sophomores. It's a networking event to uh, really help them get adjusted to the career fair experience and getting acclimated to having conversations with employers. So if you want to participate in that, that is a free event and it's really helpful to our early career talent here at, uh, at CMU. Uh, another housekeeping thing I wanted to talk about is uh, we will have the, the chat room open. So feel free to put your questions in there as we move along. We have reserved the last 10 to 15 minutes of this uh, webinar for discussion. So um, if you put some uh, questions in there and we don't get to it right in the moment, we will definitely revisit those in the last 10, 15 minutes of the event. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Sean and uh, He's going to talk about uh, some of the things that we've experienced over the past several months. Thanks, Jeff. Well, hey, it was so great to have you all here. We're in 2021 and we're ready to move forward. And this is one of the, 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 the biggest things I've been waiting for is getting on here and talking with our employers about how they can really leverage these great tools that we're using moving forward. So one of the things we wanna start with is lessons learned. What are some of the things that we learned from 2020 and and moving from virtual i mean it was uncharted territory many were weary you know according to the majority of of the 1000 university partners like ourselves with handshake recruiting events would not be in person in the spring so when we polled 65 percent of employers had never participated in a career fair virtual career fair prior to the fall students and employers expected the same experience in person but realized it really isn't that uh, we've been doing small niche virtual fairs for, for a few years here at CMU, but we knew as we were looking at different uh, vendors, different partners, that we might not be able to replicate that same in-person experience where you're in a huge gym. And is that the right experience to replicate? Um, different virtual career fair platforms created the confusion, lack of user knowledge. We know that all of you out there are working with other schools, other programs, and they're using a multitude of different uh, platforms and, and tools, and we get that it can sometimes be confusing. So as a center and, and as a partner with Handshake, we want to make sure that you have all the tools ready to go. Um, although the connection on the platform has changed, employers still need talent and students still want to meet employers. You know, that is one of the things that we, we talk with our employers and our students. We spent many weeks trying to find the perfect solution. And at the end of the day, we wanted it to be worthwhile for y'all. So what do students hope to get from the virtual career experience or expectations? You know, we wanted to make sure that we consulted with our student facing professionals as well as our students. Um, 
And we wanted to make sure that what do they want from a fair? They're looking for uh, learning about companies and employers. You know, this might be that first time if they're a freshman, you know, they're coming in. They might not know who recruits at CMU or they might not know any employers outside of the town or the or the area that they live in. So this is a great opportunity. Discover and learn about job opportunities and internships. Students at Carnegie Mellon University want to do internships and they do internships in that summer. And it's great for whether you're looking for freshmen, sophomore, junior, master's students, PhD, those students are looking for opportunities. And in the time we're living now, what better way to do it than, than online with the tool that we're using? Uh, they wanna network and build relationships with targeted employers of interest. You know, We understand you're coming to our school and that shows those students that, that you are an employer that is looking for someone like them. Uh, that really does show so much to our students that you are looking for them and maybe you have alums maybe there's folks that they can connect with introduction to employer representatives sharing resume and background this might be that first time they get a face-to-face -face interaction with an employer you want to make sure that you're in there and, and have that moment to give that first impression so what is most helpful to students? Company, culture, and job opportunities. Uh, we use some great data analytics from, uh, from Handshake. Thank you so much to Aaron and Samantha for putting together these great reports. Um, but like we said in the data before, they wanna learn about the company, the culture. They wanna make those personal connections and they wanna schedule meetings afterward. This is that first impression. You know, this could go a long way. They wanna know how am I going to go in the process? What does virtual recruiting look like? You know, it, it, it has changed and in some ways it hasn't, but what are those ways that they can connect with you after that 10 or 30 minute session in the career fair? So what's most helpful to students? Making connections. Uh, these are some great stats. We actually shared this in some of our marketing for this webinar in the fair that 58% of fair attendees viewed an employer, browsed jobs, or applied for a job on Handshake within two weeks. They're 12 times more likely to follow an employer, 1.1 times more likely to log into Handshake the next day, and 1.5 more likely to submit an application the next day. You are going to get a student that is much more interested, focused, wants to know more about your company, and guess what? They're gonna follow your company, so when you start to put those job postings, info sessions, coffee chats, you know, virtual coffee chats, whatever you're doing for your strategy, that student that followed you at that fair will now get those updates as they're moving along in that journey. So before the career fair, you know, we want to make sure that you're leveraging and Aaron and Samantha are going to go into a little bit more of the how to in a little bit, but prepare and promote, you know, with handshake campaigns, educate on brand. Did you know that you can use handshake labels to identify participants that want to further engage? You can use the label filter and search students page to locate these students later. You know, one of the things that I've learned that's been great is 100 messages that you get per season does not limit that to, I'm going to say this again, the 100 message per recruiting season limit does not apply to students who RSVP for the career fairs. You can actually message them as many times as you want. You know, how do you showcase those affinity groups when you're looking at diversity initiatives? You know, pre-fair marketing from the employer to specific groups. What student groups are you interested in? Do you have those prior connections and contacts? If you don't, how do you get those contacts? How do you connect with someone on our team like Jeff or I to figure out what are the specific groups I wanna target? Promoting your job posting, make sure that you have those jobs in Handshake ahead of time because students, as soon as they start signing up for schedules, they wanna know what are they looking for? Where are they located? What are the skills and qualities they are looking to gain? Okay, and one-on-one -on -one sessions with qualifications. You know, one of the things we want to mention that if your slots aren't getting filled in the next week or so, you might want to look at those qualifications to make sure, do, are these realistic? You know, it, you know, are we being too strict? Can we let in more? You know, one of the things when it comes to diversity is GPA. You know, is my GPA too high? Is that limiting my diversity pool? So these are some things to prepare ahead of the fair. So during the fair, you know, we want to ensure this is a big thing. Use Google Chrome or Firefox browsers for best performance. This is something, you know, when I speak with Aaron all the time from Handshake and they're like, are they using Google Chrome or Firefox? That's one of the first questions. So make sure that all of your teammates know this ahead of time. If possible, stay within the Handshake platform as opposed to having external links for interacting with students. It does create some confusion. Alert the CPDC if you have a person who can't attend the fair, we'll make sure that we inform the students. It's good to kind of know that ahead of time so that we can be prepared to help your company with that brand. The better we're connected, the better we can make that day happen. 
be authentic in your presentations and use those one-on-ones effectively. Like we said before, that's that first interaction, some of you. You know, this is, might be the first time your company's recruiting at CMU. How, how is that going to look? Um, students want tangible steps in the process. How can they succeed in getting a job at your company? With those one-on-one -on -one sessions, they're 10 minutes. So be aware of that so that you can budget your time so that maybe you can cover some of these. Um, and the greatest thing is you can actually reach out to students after the fair, which we're going to talk about now. Follow up messaging to all of those that attended those, those group and one on one sessions can be key. Make sure you're following up, even if it might not be, you know, you might not have an exact answer on where they are, at least giving them some, some type of instance of where, you know, where you are at in the process. That's going to help a lot. Students love to be in the know. Um, schedule interviews in a timely manner. If possible, send a response to students and acknowledge that you met with them. Just, just it, it's those little things that really make students, you know, Jeff and I always talk about it's that experience. You know, the students really are looking for who's, who gives a great recruiting experience. And those students really do succeed and excel here at CMU. Um, schedule info sessions or coffee chat, create interactions. You know, that's part of that strategy. Don't just stop at the fair. The fair is only one step in that process making sure you know you're getting that that word out there about your brand your culture and now you're following up and doing so much more targeted interactions with those students to make them feel you know so much more welcomed um red flags you know we've been talking about some of these students get discouraged when the company representatives are meeting with them and tell them to go to the career center i mean the career website you know we've heard that from students whether it's in person or virtual oh the, the employer told us to just go to their website you know go a little bit farther than that Yes, we know that the students might need to go to Handshake or their website, but give them some tangible steps. Talk to them maybe about how maybe you can connect them with someone in that department that they're looking to gain more info. Um, there might be a student that you might not be looking for that major particular, but maybe there's someone you know in your department or another part of the organization that might have a good fit for that student. So keep that in mind. Students can tell if a res uh, representative is unsure of the brand or position if they're representing. They want someone to speak uh, directly to a particular opportunity. So with those one-on-one -on -one sessions, this can be a great time to have some of those reps from specific departments, you know, join in. You know, you don't have to have a, a plane flight or a hotel with a virtual fair or networking event. This can be that time that you can get some of those folks that might not have been able to do it in the past. Um, and recorded interviews such as Hire View are convenient, but not great for branding, especially during this time. You know, the students want to talk to a person. Okay, so I'm going to go over a little bit about the different types of sessions. So one of the big things is you get a group session. And I think this is an amazing feature from, from Handshake because this does give you that opportunity to maybe bring in a plethora of students that might not be fitting your, your qualifications for one-on-ones, but you might be able to get that brand out there. For example, if you look over here in this, you know, they're branded. They're not just, you know, a session. They're talking about consulting. They're talking about accounting. This can be that time where you can set your company apart because now you can have them set to different roles, different industry uh, opportunities, and, and, and you can really set yourself apart. Um, company culture is a great thing to talk about within these. Like think of this almost like a little info session or TED talk. What inspires you? You know, what are you doing to change the world? You know, how are your, you know, what have past interns said? You know, if you have a chance to get someone from the diversity department, how can they talk about what they're doing on diversity initiatives? This really can be a great opportunity for you all to really set the, set the bar high. And then with one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know, if we talked about replicating career fairs, this is that opportunity to kind of replicate that in a sense. You get to have those small targeted focused conversations. Again, Think about, you know, maybe ask a professional that is, is new to your company. Maybe they were just in the recruiting cycle last year as a university, you know, student and say, if you had 10 minutes, you know, what would you want to know? You know, ask them, you know, that will help you get prepared for that session so that you're bringing out things that, that students are really interested in and also will make that student say, hey, I want to talk with that person further or I want to go look at that company page, you know, and, and with one-on-one -on -one and group sessions, make sure that you know your handshake page is up to date because if they have a good connection they're going to go to that page they're going to follow you and they're going to see what's going on what do you have posted what you know if you have those capabilities to to customize your page what what are you doing so make sure that that is done um you know no show rate is lower for one-on-one -on -one sessions you know that's definitely your motivated students and uh you know try to fill as many slots as possible they're very effective and can be a great way to make that lasting impression 
So with that being said, uh, I think we're going to push it on over to Handshake over here yeah. with Samantha. Jeff, you want to take it before we do that? Yeah, no, thanks, Sean. That was that was wonderful. Um, great, great insight. And and as I said before, a lot of a lot of the feedback we received, we had um, a lot of conversations with employers over the past couple of months, as well as as well as students at CMU. And um, so we wanted to share that with everybody, so you have an idea of what other employers have experienced and uh, what what our employers our um, our uh, students are saying. So um, we are very lucky. Our our guest stars today are Aaron and Samantha from Handshake. And uh, they have a really cool presentation. They're going to do some demos for us and uh, talk about some recent enhancements and uh, some other opportunities for engagement. So, um, Aaron, Samantha, the, the show's yours now. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Jeff and Sean. And you probably all saw both Sam and me nodding our heads vigorously for all the tips you, you shared at the start of this call. So thank you so much for sharing some of those just like virtual branding tips. Um, this is this was new territory for everyone this past season, and we're kind of figuring it out as we go along. And I think the tips you shared about um, just things to prepare in advance, having your profile up to date are, are really thoughtful ones. And up next here, we're going to share our screen and do some demoing and just dig into the product a bit more to kind of illustrate um, additional pro tips um, and, and updates here as well. Um, so we will we will do that here. And first, we'll just um, share a quick introduction so you know who's who's um, sharing this information to you here. My name is Erin O'Keefe, and I've worked at Handshake for about three years now. Um, and worked very closely with school teams as we rolled out virtual affairs this past fall. Um, so happy to, to impart some hopefully um, wise words here on what to keep in mind for this upcoming spring semester. Before this role, I was a recruiter with Deloitte Consulting um, and did a lot of campus recruiting for Deloitte. So I feel, um, feel a lot of empathy for busy recruiting season that we have coming up here. And Sam, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much to the Carnegie Mellon team for having us today. We're excited to be here. I have I do not have the same tenure that Aaron has at Handshake. Today is day eight for me. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and kind of learn from Aaron. My previous experience is actually in a career center. So um, I worked with another Handshake partner and was able to move, make this move over to uh, be helping as a relationship manager with the teams like Carnegie Mellon and other teams in the Handshake platform. So really excited to be here today. Great. So with that, um, just quickly checking, Sean and Jeff, you can see my screen okay? Yep, we can see you. Okay, great. So um, as was already mentioned, we're first going to talk through some of the more recent enhancements. It sounds like a lot of you may have used our virtual fair tool at least once during this fall season. Um, and based on employer and school team feedback, we've made um, even further, even um, more updates even later in the season. So just want to talk through some of the more recent updates to make sure you're all aware of those. Um, and then I'll go into a some pro tips here in terms of editing your schedules, um, engaging with students beyond the career fair, and then I'll switch to the students view so you can see what students see when they sign up for virtual affair sessions um, and just talk a bit more about um, ways that you can stand out to students um, in the virtual fair format. So first wanted to talk through some of the more recent enhancements on our end for virtual affairs. Um, for those of you who are familiar with virtual fairs, you set up a, a schedule and you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions available to students and or group sessions as well. Um, one thing I wanted to note here uh, is that we, we very, um, we saw in a very real way that these schedules needed to be flexible leading up to the fair and even during the fair. We understand that last minute changes might, might happen um, even on the day of the fair. So I did wanna call out in this manage sessions drop down tool, which I'll illustrate shortly here. There are a number of ways that you can kind of edit your schedules before the fair and even during the fair. Um, and this is something that we, 
we kind of evolved throughout the, the fair season. So this includes, you can transfer a schedule to a team member um, even during the fair itself if you need to swap out one representative for another. So this drop down is, is a good thing to have in mind in case you need to make tweaks leading up to the fair. And then um, another more recent update that I wanted to talk through as well is the ability to for students now to be able to sign up for and join group sessions even after the group session starts. So again, our virtual fair tool is in kind of a scheduling format and students, if they want to be early birds, they can sign up for sessions in advance of the fair. Um, and students can also happen upon sessions on the day of the fair and during the fair that they can sign up for. Um, previously with our tool, students had to sign up for the session before the session started in order to participate. We wanted to add a bit more flexibility here, especially for the the 30 minute group sessions, recognizing that there might be some instances where students don't happen upon a group session until maybe the group session already started. So we have made the update that students can sign up for a group session um, even after the group session has started and join, join late that way if, if they're wanting to drop in later. That just adds more, more flexibility for group sessions and for students to join, join at any time. Um, so that's just something I, I wanted to share with this group just to keep in mind, if, if you really wanna emphasize that your group session is like an open Q&A or a casual drop-in session, that's something you can illustrate by titling your, your group session. Um, it's something more casual if, if you want to kind of reinforce that point. Great. So those are the couple of updates that I wanted to, to share here. I'm just checking the chat um, to see if there's any questions to call out. Um, any suggestions for organizations that want to reach volunteers? Um, I'm Sarah Bath, I'm not sure if that's, um, if you're saying you're like recruiting volunteers um, among students. And I think, okay, perfect, yep. So that is something you can indicate, indicate very clearly in the group session title and um, also too in your representatives user settings titles as well. So once I switch to the student view, I'll show you how those appear to students and kind of talk through a scenario there. Okay, so let me switch into my, my demo account here and just wanna talk through some pro tips, if you will, for um, what you can do in terms of editing your schedule, even on the day of the fair. So I'm in my, I'm in my employer view right now and I've already set up my schedule. As you can see, as students sign up for the schedule, you'll see their name and their profile pic picture if they have one visible here. You can view their profile here as well. Um, so this is what it looks like when a schedule is already set up and students are signing up for slots. If you are looking to edit your schedule at any point, even during the fair, you can do so by clicking this manage drop, this manage sessions drop down. Uh, and pretty much all of the editing capabilities are, are outlined here. Um, so you can add a team member to a group session. You can create a new group session. Um, right now I have two group sessions, but if I wanna add a third one, that's something I can decide to do at any point, even on the day of the fair, you can make a, a last minute judgment call and add an additional group session to your schedule. You can change the information on your group sessions. Um, and you can even transfer um, a schedule from one team member to another. So let's say my colleague Clinton, who I initially had in the schedule, um, needs to, to drop out last minute. So I can choose a different, different colleague here and just click confirm to, to transfer Clinton's whole schedule to, to Julia if she's filling in for Clinton. Um, if that's the case, if you're tran transitioning schedules from one representative to another, um, any students who have signed up for that schedule, they, they will still be on that schedule. So nothing really changes from the student experience. It's seamless in that way. And Julia then is just able to sign in and meet with those students. So those are the couple, the couple of areas I wanted to call out in terms of editing schedules. Um, again, that's all available in this Manage Sessions dropdown here. 
A couple of tips to note that's available on this schedule scheduling tab page. Um, at any point, you can switch any of your time slots, whether they be group sessions or one-on-one -on -one sessions, to say for whatever reason you need to switch to from Handshake video to an externally hosted video. Um, in some rare cases, there were instances where companies had firewalls where they couldn't use the, the video that we have on our platform. And you, sh you ideally will discover this beforehand, um, but if for whatever reason you need to switch to a platform like Zoom or WebEx during the fair, you can always do that by clicking these three dots in, in a schedule time slot, and then click switch to externally hosted video here, put in your Zoom link here, and this is a, again, a seamless experience for students. So students will just still click the join video button, and instead of connecting through Handshake video, they'll be taken to whatever Zoom or WebEx link you put in here. So I would just put that in your, in your back pocket as a backup. Um, using Handshake video is the most integrated way to use our tool, but this is just kind of like a backup troubleshooting tip that I think it's, it's good to be aware of. You can also, of course, um, mark any time slots as, as busy, which hopefully folks already know, but for yourself or any of your representatives, um, if you wanna put in breaks throughout the day, you can mark them as busy by just clicking those three, do three dots and indicating that it should be busy. And the final thing I wanna call out on this page is um, the ability to test the Handshake video before the fair. Strongly, strongly recommend you doing this so that there are no surprises during the day of the fair itself. Um, this is available to you at any time um, as soon as you set up your schedule for the fair. So I highly recommend, especially if you have multiple representatives joining you for the fair, um, creating a, a test video link and having your colleagues join you. I knew at least one company who set aside a time to test their group session presentation. So they had all four team members set up a test handshake video so that they could go through sharing their screen and go through practicing their, their presentation in advance. So that's something I, I definitely like to, to recommend there. Um, I'll pause there just to see if there are any additional questions. Um, can a student submit their, I do see one in the Q&A actually. I'm looking at chat and Q&A, so just trying to cover our bases here. Can a student submit their resumes to us but not schedule a time with us in case we are full um, is a question that Christina asked. Um, a, a student can a student cannot like drop their resume, for example, at this time in our virtual fair tool. Um, if you have a job posting available, that might be something you'll you could call out in like your description that students see. So students can apply to a job posting and submit their resume that way to show to show interest in a job opportunity you have. Right now, there's not a separate resume drop for them to to put their resume in. Um, but actually, that's a good segue because um, the next topic I wanted to touch on here is kind of engaging with students beyond the fair, accessing their resumes, and, um, and also messaging students. So this is something that I wanted to share this screenshot for. Um, the RSVP tab that you have in your, in your virtual, virtual fair page for a certain virtual fair event, that is available before, during, and after the fair that does not expire. And as students sign up for your schedules, um, all of the students' names will show up on the RSVP tab. And there's a couple of important actions that you can take in the RSVP tab. So if you, in this example, there were 50 attendees that this employer wanted to select. So you can bulk select a certain number of attendees for your virtual fair. Um, and you can do a few things here. You can download any and all public resumes of those students. Um, so that's something you can do in bulk on the RSVP tab. You can download a CSV to just get a list of the students who have participated, who have signed up for your schedule for the virtual fair. 
And then finally, um, there is this button here to message students from this page. And as I think either Sean or Jeff pointed out here, if you message students from the virtual fair RSVP tab, that does not go, that does not count towards any like messaging limit on Handshake. The way we see it at the way we see it is that students have intentionally shown interest in your company by signing up for a virtual fair schedule that you're hosting. So they clearly have shown an indication and in, of an interest in your company. Um, so you are able to, to message students from this tab as well, and it will not count against any um, limit in Handshake for messaging students. Um, you can, in terms of what I've heard from employers, you can message students in advance, just letting them know you're excited to, to meet them, maybe like the day before the fair and just like reminding them, hey, here are the opportunities we'll be talking about. Um, feel free to let me, we can talk further about any of these that you might be interested in. Um, or and or you can message, message students after the fair, um, especially if you want to share out contact information. I would recommend um, considering messaging students to, to share out the right contact information after the fair. Okay. Um, next, I did want to switch to the student side of things to kind of illustrate what what students see when they are signing up for the fair. So let me get into my my demo account here. And so you can see what students see when they're kind of going through the process of viewing um, employers in Handshake. All right. So this is, this is a view of a student who has already registered for a virtual fair. Once a student has registered for a virtual fair, they will be popped out onto this tab here so that they can immediately see which employers already have sessions available for them to sign up for. Um, this is something that I think is, is really important to note here. I think the sequencing is important for virtual fairs in Handshake. So ideally employers register first and employers create at least the start of their schedule. They can always change and add their schedule leading up to the fair. Um, but we definitely want employers creating their schedule first so that by the time that students go to register for the fair, when they are looking for employers to, to sign up for, um, for, their, for their sessions, they're seeing, they're seeing your sessions right away, um, right when they register. And as students are looking for, for sessions, this is basically the experience that they see. So they'll see the company, the company name, they will see the description. When you register for a virtual fair, they, um, you put in a, a description for your registration. Students do see that description when they're looking through available sessions. So any Im important information you wanna call out um, or maybe your company website can be included, included in there. Um, so for, for the individual who asked about um, kind of making it clear that they're looking for volunteers, that might be something you'll, you'll want to really call out specifically in the description for the registration for the fair. Um, a couple of other places you can call that out is in the group session um, titles. So you can see here, the O'Keefe company has one-on-ones available for the student to sign up for, for the student to sign up for. There's also two group sessions that the student can sign up for. One is a consult, one I've titled a consulting information session in Q&A, and the other one I've titled accounting information session in Q&A. But this is free text. So this can be like volunteer interest, join this session um, to learn more about volunteer opportunities. That's probably too lengthy of a title. Um, but this group session title is, is really, you want this to be as clear as possible to students so that they know what they're, what they're signing up for. Erin, hey, real quick, a um, couple things. Nicole has a question about, uh, is there, she asked if there's a cap on the registration on how many students can be in a group session. 
Um, there, there is, but there's also a way around that actually. So for the, if you are using Handshake video, meaning the video that's integrated within Handshake for this, for this virtual affair tool, there is a limit of 50 participants. So only up to 50 participants can can sign up for a group session if you're using handshake video is you if you opt to use an external video like zoom or webex again there is no limit or it is the limit is whatever maybe your zoom or webex account can hold i should say good to know great um Okay, a couple other things I, I did want to note, just so you can see kind of what students experience here. Um, I, if let's say I'm a student and I want to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session with this company, I can click the one-on-one -on -one session here. And then if there are multiple representatives who have schedule availability, I would be able to see the full list here as I scroll down. Um, I do see the representative's first and last name as a student, and I also see their title that is a field in the representative's user settings. So this again is, is an area in Handshake that if you want to call out um, a certain line of work that this representative is a part of, or if you want to indicate that, you know, one representative is the recruiter and another representative is a senior partner, or in this case, uh, a marketing manager. That's something I, I would recommend filling out in the user settings in the title field because it, it is displayed to students here. And just to show you what this looks like, students also will see, um, we do not allow students to, to double book, to, to overlap themselves in their schedule. So I as a student already signed up for a 9-10 one-on-one -on -one session. If I try to double book myself, Handshake will show an error here. Um, so I'll have to choose, choose another time here to connect with this other company at nine. One thing I wanted to add, Aaron, and just so all the employers on the, uh, the call right now are aware, as, as Aaron mentioned, this is what the students see. So if you don't have your booth set up and your one-on-one -on -one session set up, students will see that and it, it's we prefer that you have everything set up now we haven't opened it up to students yet however we will be doing that tomorrow at noon eastern time so you have a little less than 23 hours if you haven't done that yet good reminder <laughs> the clock is ticking the clock is ticking yes. yes so i think that's a really good call out so starting tomorrow students will start registering and we'll see a page that looks exactly like this and we'll start looking through companies and signing up for sessions um, and they can come back later and sign sign up for sessions but definitely don't want to don't want them to miss the opportunity of engaging with your company at the right time and signing up for for one of your the sessions that you have available but yeah, the, the main thing I just, just to recap here, there, there are a few areas in particular where you can be very clear with students about your brand or what you're focusing on or the opportunities available to students that are very clearly displayed to them here. One is the description in your registration. Um, so that is something students see from the get-go when they're looking for available sessions. Um, one is the name of the group sessions that you have, the title of your group sessions, just wanting to make that really clear if there's a certain focus of that group session. And then finally, finally, the other point here is um, the title of your representatives. Students will see that title when they, when they look to, to connect with different representatives for one-on-ones. So those were some, just some pro tips um, in terms of kind of what's displayed for students and employers. Um, I kind of did a hodgepodge of looking at questions, but I know we wanted some, some extra time for questions anyway. And then Sam did wanna um, give you a chance if, if you had additional pointers that you heard from employers or just anything you wanted to kind of reinforce as well, feel free to, to share your thoughts. Yeah, I think um, just something to, to think about as well is that a student can have 
multiple one-on-ones with the same company. Um, so if you do have different roles that are available or someone specializing in X role and you have someone looking at Y role where a student could be interested in both, um, that's where it's even more important to really be specific in those titles um, for the one-on-ones because a student can, can schedule with more than one recruiter or contact at a specific company. So keep that in mind. And to kind of uh, go on that a little bit more is when you're doing that outreach ahead of time and reaching out to students, this could be a great time to say, hey, you might want to schedule a time with Lisa or you might this would be a, a Mark would be a perfect person to talk with if you're interested in blank. That can kind of give some students more transparency and more direction, which our students, honestly, they do well with when they, when it's more transparent and, and, and more obvious. Um, so I always say try to think like a student. That's a great tip. I really like that, Sean. Um, Aaron, I have a question from, from the group. Can multiple reps attend a group presentation using the Handshake Native system? Yes. Yep. There, there can be multiple reps. So you, you certainly can have a couple or, or multiple representatives joining the group session. One thing to note, although usually this isn't too much of a consideration, if you have, um, let's say you had 10 reps join your group session, that does count against the 50 participant limit that we have for the video session. Um, so, I mean, if it's one, two or three reps, I wouldn't be so concerned about taking slots away from students. Um, but if it's like 10 to 15 reps joining your group session, that's something you might wanna be aware of, but I don't know if that's happened yet. Um, now, if they wanted to share their screen, let's say they wanted to share a video or share a screen, can employers do that within the system? Yes, they can. You can do, you can share your screen for both a group session and a one-on-one -on -one session. It is, when you join the Handshake video, it is like a, a screen icon at the bottom, at the bottom of your screen. And to, and to test this out, just to plug this again, um, to test out sharing your screen, I recommend going to your virtual fair registration and clicking the test handshake video button. And you can see exactly what the chat looks like, um, what it looks like to test your sound and video, and also what it looks like to share your screen. Great, thank you. Hey, hey Aaron, I have a question. Can you show people how, one of the things we talked about was the before the fair, during the fair, and after the fair. And I think part of the, after the affair, after, the event, um, we want to find a way to help employers connect with, with those students that attended. Can we go into something to show the employers how we can find those contacts for the students within the Handshake system that attended? Um, yep, so let me share my screen again here. Because I think from a branding perspective, I think that's really important um, in terms of sticking out yep. um, from other employers. And I know students that we've talked to said that, you know, any like little follow ups that they've received from employers really went a long way with them. And it made them think, well, that, that employer took that extra time, that that yep. extra step to do some outreach after we met, regardless if you're if you're interested or not at least you're doing that. And it's just really good for your brand regardless. For sure. I, I'll i share, so I'll share where this is located and then I'll go back to the screenshot where I kind of talked through this. I don't have a good, like fully populated example in my demo account right now, but the RSVP tab that I'm circling right now, um, and if you're in the system, feel free to go ahead and click on this RSVP tab here. This is where as students sign up for, for sessions, they will be populated in this tab. And just to kind of revisit the screenshot that I shared earlier, um, this is where in this RSVP tab, you can take all of these actions of selecting as many students as you want for these bulk actions of mass messaging students here or downloading their public resumes or just like downloading the list of students. And again, this is available before the fair to reach out to the students, even during the fair um, and after the fair as well. Now, as an employer, can I reach out to um, all, all students that have registered for the fair? 
Um, as an employer, you cannot reach out to all the students who have just registered for the, the school's fair as a whole. Um, you can, it, you can only kind of, this RSVP tab is only for students who have registered for your specific schedule. For one of your events. Okay. Yes. Yep. So would a, a good practice be if you have jobs posted and you see students in their resumes you like and you want to have them attend, you could perhaps reach out to them through Handshake that way? Correct. Yes. You can still, like at any time in Handshake, you can search through students' profiles um, and message students if they have their, if they have opted into that kind of level of being viewable by employers. Yeah. Um, so you can do kind of um, some outreach of that, of that type before the fair. Um, but in terms of being able to kind of like bulk message students um, from the fair, that's really tied to students who signed up for your specific schedule. Got it. Got it. So if you're looking to get more people to sign up for one of your events, it would probably be a good pra practice to go into jobs that you have posted or search um, students in Handshake that are open to, to contact, correct? I, I really like that idea. Yes, if you have jobs posted, um, messaging your applicants of that job could be a really good idea to kind of like prompt them to like stop by and meet up with one of your representatives during the fair. Um, and also, yeah, like we talked through the tips of kind of how you've displayed your fair registration and what your group session titles look like in the description of your employer registration. And then finally, yeah, in addition to doing that, you can search and message students one-on-one -on -one in Handshake as well. Terrific. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, so, so I would like to say that, you know, if you are having, you know, interested in learning about different ways that you can create a strategy for CMU to get your brand out there even more, Jeff and I would be more than happy to sit down and have a recruiting consultation with you and your team. With that being said, I'm going to ask another question from the group. It sounds like we could use group sessions to one, communicate information to a large group with similar interests, example, data analyst careers at ABC Inc., or two, communicate general information to large groups. Um, any other tips for making group sessions more compelling? Um, I, I'll start the answer and then folks can kind of answer yeah. that, they, that they want. You know, I always say, what is the information that students can't get from visiting your website or going on LinkedIn? You know, think about what is that, what, what, are, what is that like a little nugget that I'd love to share with, with folks that they can't get, whether you having a, maybe it's a conversation between two past interns or two new employees, you know, to get that inside look, whether it's doing a, a, a ask me anything kind of way. Um, other folks, any other uh, tips? Yeah, I, I agree with that point, Sean. Um, I wanted to reshare what it looks like from the student's perspective, um, because the, the title you gave was like, you know, group session at AVC Inc. Um, you can say that, but keep in mind, the, the company name will already be up top here. Um, so maybe if you want to keep like a concise group session title, it can just be on like the, the topic area of the group session. One, one kind of context piece to keep in mind too that I've heard from school teams is um, there are kind of like different personas of students and maybe different levels of preparedness for going into a virtual affair. Some students are like ready to go. They've done their research. They want the one-on-one -on -one FaceTime where they're on the spot and just ready with their elevator pitch for the fair. The group session kind of has a different vibe to it and maybe like different assumptions from students. Um, from what I've heard from school teams, it might be the, the underclassmen or um, just students who might be interested in learning and kind of exploring on a, in a more low key way that might sign up for the group sessions. Um, so that's that's not always the case, but um, just just kind of a thought to share there. So um, in, maybe in your title, if, if you want to make it like very much, you know, open discussion, Q&A, um, rather than like formal presentation format group session, um, feel free to kind of like make that clear in, in your group session title. And then also in your group se session description too, like if you really want to emphasize that, like no need to prepare or like, well, we're 
here to have like an open conversation, um, come talk with the young alumni, that can all be really highlighted in the, in the group session description as well. And speaking of this, Erin, are there any good recommendation, recommendations you might have of topics like uh, that are maybe hot topics, maybe like uh, culture at XYZ company or diversity, equity, inclusion at XYZ. Like, are, are there certain topics that you've seen in terms of the group chats that have been, um, maybe have, have gotten more traction than others? Definitely the examples you shared there. Um, Sam, wondering if you, if, yeah, if you have ideas of the group session topics that are particularly of interest to students that you saw? Yeah, I think, um, you know, right off the bat, I'm thinking like naming them something that the student connects with. So I just did a quick search on Carnegie Mellon and I know that you're Tartan Proud. So maybe I have my group session actually called Tartan Proud at O'Keefe Company. And that's where my alumni live for the day. Mm -hmm. um, but I think doing topics, diversity, equity, and inclusion at O'Keefe and Company, um, you know, what it's like to be Gen X at your company um, or Gen Z, I'm sorry, not Gen X. <laughs> That's not our students, our alumni. Um, you know, that could be great as well, or just what that really, the intern experience is like versus the full-time experience. Um, you know, those could have very different, um, the, the students could have very different experiences depending on what types of roles they're interested in. Um, so those could just be a few little tips that that could pique a student's interest. I like uh, that. That's, that's great. No, I like that too. I like the alumni piece too, the Tartan, yeah. the Tartan piece like that. That's really cool. Cause I know our students always like to hear from alums, especially ones that, you know, that are working with particular companies so they can talk about, you know, their experience, recruiting experience, how long they've been there. I love that. Terrific. Yeah, anything Thanks. that makes the student feel comfortable right off the bat, I think it's going to make them excited and have that be like, oh, I actually get to talk about something that I know, right, you know, right from the beginning, I'm yeah. going to be talking to my peeps. So that's great. Yeah. Well, we are, um, we have a few minutes left. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions out there that are brewing. Um, yeah, so it, it looks like uh, I have a question about one on one sessions. Will, will the one-on-one -on -one sessions end abruptly or can they be extended if the conversation is going well? Handshake does not abruptly end either the one-on-one -on -one sessions nor the group sessions. There is a one minute warning pop-up that appears for both the employer representative and the student. But once you hit like the 10 minute mark, you are not kicked out, um, which actually is extra helpful to note because we do recommend kind of being mindful of your schedule and when you have the next one-on-one -on -one session coming up. If no students, if no students have signed up for um, follow-up sessions, or if you already had a break scheduled, you are welcome to, of course, continue that conversation with the student. Um, I think our our system does eventually cut it off, but it's well beyond the schedule time. I think it's like 20 minutes after the schedule time, it will eventually be cut off. So you're not like talking with them forever. Um, but there is, there is some flexibility there if you are if you feel very confident that you don't have a session after this, and of course. Um, likely want to be mindful of the student's schedule as well, um, but there's no abrupt cutoff. All right, any other questions? All right, doesn't... Thanks, Jennifer. Terrific. Awesome. Good stuff. I think that's all the questions we had in the mm -hmm. Q&A. Um, but this has been wonderful. Aaron, Samantha, thank you so much for joining us today. That was, those are some really good tips. And uh, for all the employers out there who are joining us today, if you do have any questions after this event, please feel free to reach out to me or, or Sean. Um, we're happy to go over any, uh, any questions or help walk through anything that might be uh, 
happening on your end. And um, we will be, we have recorded this session, so we'll be on our website. So I don't, Sean, do you know when that might be available to everybody? I'm uh, hoping that it's available as soon as possible within the next day. Yeah. So we do have a website where the webinars are housed and uh, I'll try to put that in the chat here in a second. Terrific, terrific. So that will be available. So if you have people on your team that will be attending the event that haven't or could not attend this uh, webinar, you can share this with them and they can do a little uh, refresher on what they need to do before the event. But uh, this was great. Thank you so much, Aaron and uh, Samantha. You guys were awesome. Sean, thank you very much. And to everybody else, hope everyone has a great, great spring. Thanks all. Thank you. Have a great one. Take care.